Welcome back to the Meeple Marathon and my 12 days of a Christmas challenge. Uh, today is going to be nine ladies dancing. Yeah, nine ladies dancing. It's our number nine list of the year. And today I'm going to be talking about my top nine narrative story games. Now, one quick uh, little caveat is that I ranked these games and how much I enjoyed the story, how engaging was the story. Not necessarily overall whether I enjoyed the game or not, but I'm ranking these on my story experience, the narrative experience in the game. So you may see some games on here that uh, on other lists are ranked higher, but these are ranked on the story that was included in the game. And two games that I want to discuss briefly before I get to my actual list. One is uh, Star Wars Unlocked or Unlocked Star Wars. Um, when I was going through and just making sure I hadn't forgotten about any games, this one was listed under the you know narrative storytelling um, uh, uh, list on, on BGG. I don't really consider this a narrative driven game, but I did enjoy it. Um, so I guess technically it told a story through the cards. Um, you know, it's a lot of little mini puzzles. Um, it, essentially, they were three stories that were kind of connected, but I personally really didn't even think of it. But uh, it was on, you know, in that BGG category, so I wanted to just mention it uh, because maybe that's right up your alley. And the other one is Role Player Adventures. This is one that, um, for various reasons, I decided not to back at the time that you know the Kickstarter came out. And I know that it's been delivered to backers and it, retail copies are available. It's just not one that I have picked up yet. I do plan to pick it up in the future. And I've heard great things about the narrative aspect of this game, that the stories are very well written, very engaging, and that's really probably the highlight of the game. Um, that the you know the dice puzzles and things like that are there, but they're you know can can be rather simplistic. Once you build up your hero, you just start knocking them out really easily. But from what I hear, the story alone is worth picking up the game for. So I have not personally played that game, so I cannot give you my opinion on it. But I wanted to mention it because I've heard a lot of great things about it. So with those two out of the way, let's go ahead and get started with uh, number nine, and that is Aftermath. Uh, this is one of uh, Plat Hat Games by Jerry Hawthorne's Adventure Book Games. Um, I r really liked the the gameplay elements of this game, and uh, you know the theme, the whole mice uh, theme, and the story was was fine. It was well written, but I think part of the problem was, and why this one dipped so far for me, is that you have the ability to choose whatever mission you go on. In between and there really is not any like guide that says well if you want to kind of stick with the linear arc of the story you'd want to do this one next there's all these side quests and all of them have narrative content to it and you get kind of mixed up and lost and one time you're doing something uh, you're doing one mission and then you come back to another one and I think if you sat down and played them in numerical order you don't have all of them though unlocked at the beginning and other times you're thinking "Ooh, I really want to unlock this character or you know uh, each character has their own set of like side quests you want to complete so maybe you're trying to complete one of the character side quests so you jump ahead it really disconnected the story for me and it made it hard to keep up with uh, the overall uh, story arc so again the the narrative elements were well written um, I think they just needed a little bit more guidance in, um, you know, a little less uh, choice, full choice of the player to play whatever scenario you wanted at any given time because you really kind of just start to get very disconnected from the story. So that's my number nine, Aftermath. My number eight is Near and Far by Red Raven Games. Um, a, another Red Raven game that was on my initial ranking list and just didn't quite make the cut, but is actually number 10 on my list was Above and Below. Both of these have very well written narratives um, and it really is just kind of like pop in and out narratives. When you're playing uh, near and far, let me see if I can find uh, an example here of the book, the adventure book here. You'll see that there are points of interest on the map. Um, this one has been fully explored. It's got all these campsites on it, but when you start on a map, uh, there's all these exploration tokens uh, that you're gonna want to access. And as you go to each location, you're going to read a, a little bit of narrative. Um, 
that you then have to make a decision, solve a skill check, something like that. And the narrative is really cute, but it's not um, super cohesive. It's somewhat cohesive uh, in that when you're on, say, this map, all of the narratives are going to be regarding this map and missions you would see on this map. This is where it was definitely a step up from above and below because above and below you just drew a random card and everything was down in the caverns all the stories happened down in the caverns the below part of above and below but uh the, the the stories were very disconnected it was just a really nice little narrative you read it you made your decision or solved your did your skill check and then you moved on this one took it and made it a little bit more cohesive but again there's so much more going on to this game that uh the narrative is not as present uh, but again this is a great game i really love this game and on a all-time best list would probably be higher um but again as far as the narrative experience um the stories are cute um but again you could play this board and only end up reading like three of them so you don't really get again the full picture uh that is my number eight near and far all right up next is legacy of dragon Hole. Now, Legacy of Dragonholt is a uh, unique game in the aspect that there is no board, there's no dice, there's no player movers, pawns. It is a you know straight book uh, and lots of reading. It's almost all entirely reading, and occasionally you do skill checks, and you're keeping track of your character on this sheet. And the story is very well done. Um, but that's it. I mean, it's it's really just you know you sit down and you read and you do your skill checks based on whether or not you know you have the the skill or not do you have the skill or not um have you been keeping up with it there's like i said there's no dice there's no randomization or anything like that but the story is is nice uh it's not the most incredible story i ever played through um but you can see there's lots of uh options you know lots of books to read through there's the main village book which you kind of always come back to and then you go off do you go into the crypts do you go into the prairie the new roads whispering leaves um you know and you basically kind of choose which mission you want to go on uh, one of its biggest drawbacks is that i felt like all right once i played through everything i was done I sold off my copy because I was like, I, I really don't feel like going back through this with another character because I already know what's going to happen. I know what stats I, I should best build up. Um, so it's really kind of a one and done um, situation. But great story. And if you are wanting something that's very relaxed, something you could literally just sit on the couch. I traveled with this game a lot because it would easily fit in like my book bag. You could sit on a plane or, you know, on vacation and you're basically just reading a magazine is what it feels like. Um, you need a little bit of space to keep chart some stuff on your, um, your paper. But other than that, um, very travels very well. So that's my number seven legacy of dragon hole. All right, up next is the predecessor to Aftermath, again with the mice from Jerry Hawthorne and Plat Hat Games, and this one is Mice and Mystics. This one is uh, a dungeon crawler that um, just barely missed my top dungeon crawlers list. Uh, has this very cute theme of uh, essentially you play people who have been turned into mice and are now dropped down into the castle that you formerly... Um, um, lived in and the bad guys have been turned into rats and you have been turned into mice and now all of a sudden you have to navigate your environment where you're much smaller <clears throat> fighting the you know the bad guys everybody's in rat form all of a sudden things like cockroaches and scorpions provide a real threat to you uh the cat provides a real threat to you the story is very well done uh the gameplay is pretty basic it's pretty straightforward um i've tried playing this with my kids because the gameplay is so basic and for straightforward but they have um they have personally lost a little interest in the story because there is a lot of reading involved uh, a lot of narrative between um the actual play sessions but the story is great um, I, I think they just weren't quite old enough to sit still long enough for me to get through the text and then get to the, the gameplay. Um, but again, this is a very basic dungeon crawler with a really cute theme. Uh, it's very family friendly and has a great story involved. So um, really not much else uh, needs to be said other than that. You can see all the, you know, the various miniatures are all, you know, either rats, mice or big bugs essentially my, my wife does not like this game because it has cockroach miniatures she's not a fan uh, also if you happen to have this and aftermath aftermath has cockroaches in the game but in that box it only comes with cardboard tokens for cockroaches so you could pull out your cockroaches from ice and mystics and use them 
in Aftermath and have miniatures for the cockroaches. All right, that was my number six. Let's go ahead and keep this rolling. Up next is Gloomhaven. Now, Gloomhaven is, um, for some people, their top game. It still sits, you can see here, uh, ranked one overall, thematic and strategy, one overall. Um, for me, I think that um, here you can see, um, you know, here's the, the narrative book. So you can see there's a fair amount of text that comes before and after each scenario. Um, for me, the story was just okay. Um, I easily could have just skipped from you know one battle scene to the next and hopped over the narrative. In the end, it gets kind of interesting. I think part of the problem with me for Gloomhaven is it took me so long to complete the game with my brother-in-law. And again, I've, as I've mentioned, COVID did not help that situation. Also, the side quests. Sometimes you get going on side quests and side quests leads to another side quest. And all of a sudden you realize you've been on this like five scenario side quest story arc and you get back to the main story arc and you're like, what was going on again? Because it's been several play sessions since you've actually you know, played the main game and maybe it's been like a month since you were back at the main story arc, and you just kinda like, what's even going on again? I remember something happening and there's this gloom and you know, um, you know, I kind of got lost in the middle or lost track of the middle. Um, honestly, what I'd really love to see is, and I would read in a heartbeat, is someone to do a novella or novel of the, the Gloomhaven storyline and just take the main storyline, throw in a few of the side missions, but somebody just create a book that goes through the experience. Obviously, you wouldn't read the book until you played the game, unless you had no interest in playing the game. But I think that that would make a good story. I think just uh, intermixed with all the gameplay and having to sit down with a gaming group and, and keep up with the storyline, it just it kind of got lost in the shuffle. Um, so again, excellent game. Loved the game. Good storyline. Um, but it's not the best storyline um, I have experienced. So that is Gloomhaven, my number five. I don't know why I can't keep up with my uh, my numbers here. All right, up next is Folklore the Affliction. This one has a very like fantasy horror theme to it, so this one may not be for everyone. Um, what I really appreciate the most, and let's see if this picture does a good job of showing it off somewhat, um, is the fact that the it's this... I feel like the game has a really excellent flow to it of a little bit of narrative scenes. Maybe there's a skill check thrown in here or there. And then there's these little mini um, combat sequences where you don't even need to get out a board. You don't even need to get out the miniatures. You just get out the card of the, say, angry mob that you're taking on. And you're just rolling some dice. Um, you have your basic skill checks, uh, your basic skills written on your card. You have their basic skills. And you know it's basically this mini confrontation. It helps keep the story moving and again the, the story is is good it's engaging it has that kind of darker theme to it so that, again it may not be for everyone but i feel like just the way they constructed the adventure book um if you want to call it that I'm trying to find a better picture of the adventure book and all i'm seeing are a bunch of painted miniatures here um but i just really appreciate how, see, this is a skirmish right here. You can see that you're basically just like rolling certain dice and um, you basically just have these cards out. You don't even need the miniatures. I don't know why, you know, they just threw the miniature out here for fun. Um, but I just, that was such a refreshing way to break up the narrative um, that it kept the, kept the narrative moving for me and kept me engaged. Uh, so it wasn't just a bunch of text and then a, uh, a scenario with miniatures and a battle and then a bunch of text. So I just really appreciated how they broke things up like that and structured their adventure book. Uh, so that's why Folklore of the Affliction has jumped so high on my list of narrative games. That was my number four. All right, moving on to my number three is Tainted Grail, The Fall of Avalon. Um, this is another one that's a kind of a darker theme. This is like Arthurian legend, um, but what happens when um, Arthur disappears from the land uh, and this darkness sweeps over the land. And this game had a very much a Seventh Continent feel to it. Um, I, I know a lot of people think Seventh Continent is a narrative driven game. I don't necessarily call it that. This one had much more of a story built into it. Um, and you know there was a lot of decisions that you would make and it would lead to different story arcs but for the most part the story was very linear 
Um, I think my biggest negative was that there were sometimes different varying paths you could take in the story, and they all ended at the same point, and you, you, you would branch off of them, and the, the, it wasn't disconnected like Aftermath was. But sometimes one path would be so much longer than the other path, and you'd read like you know BGG posts and forum posts and things like that of people's experience, and one of them would say, if you were willing to, if you didn't care about the spoilers, or somebody would say, oh, I, I took this path here, and it was very quick. It only took me, you know, two hours to complete this um, chapter. And another person like me uh, said, oh, I took the other one, and I was all over the map, back and forth, and literally like seven hours later, I finally was seeing the light at the end of the tunnel, but it still wasn't even done. So, take that with a grain of salt that there is definitely paths different paths within the story you can take and some could take you very much longer than others but again the story is there it's very well written it is a darker theme i think for me why this is so high on my list is because it's a theme i really like the whole king arthur camelot theme is one that i've always enjoyed and been um you know very interested in again it is a very dark theme um you know there's a lot of gloom in the game but the artwork's incredible the the miniatures that you are using are incredible especially you have you have the um bigger expansion box of just the monster miniatures i went with just the standees but i have the little standees which are you know amazing artwork so those work for me but again it's just a very well done game great to look at has a very dark theme to it but again as an excellent story especially if you're interested in that king arthur arthurian legend uh, this is definitely a game that you would want to to get your hands on all right coming in number two is madara unintentional malum act one um this one uh topped my dungeon crawler list um for various reasons but one of those was the story um the story in this is incredibly well done there is a ton of narrative text that you either have to read or if you're like me you use the foreteller app and you have it read to you like an audible book and that works just fine um but again you can see here this just massive size of this story book here it's absolutely enormous if there was one thing i wish they had done with madara if i could change one thing about madara the thing that always pops up in my head while i'm playing is why couldn't we have broken this book up into like three smaller books I mean, honestly, why does it have to be one giant book? <laughs> it's so ridiculous how big and heavy this book is. And a couple of my, you know, it's not spiral bound, which is nice, but sometimes it's so heavy to like just flip and, and get to be looking at, you know, fold it under itself and be looking at one page because it is kind of a table hog. And uh, some of my pages are starting to get torn near the bottom. And I, again, I really <laughs> just wish they had taken this giant book and broken it up into like three or four smaller books. Why couldn't we have done that? Come on. Anyways, um, again, the, the story is excellent in this game. I feel like I am watching a, now it is an anime style theme. There's a lot of teenage angst in the story. And um, you, know, you play these characters, you can see them in the background there, who are just now graduating from the academy and um you know they're never they're never going to age on this you know new planet they they came from earth and now they're here and they're always going to look like this and i'm um, always going to be young and beautiful and muscular and and it, you know it's very very anime driven story uh so for some people that may not be for you but for others it may be right up your alley um but again the story is great either way i feel like when i play this game i am watching an hbo miniseries and getting to play out the action scenes uh instead of having to watch them um so highly recommend the story on this one it is a big price tag but there is a ton of content in this box there is i'm not even close to uh having played through unintentional malamact one i still have a ways to go um but i'm looking forward to it so that was my number two my number one, uh, if you've been following the channel throughout the year, should come as no big surprise to you. That is Sleeping Gods by Red Raven Games and Ryan Lockett, the same individual who did Above and Below and then did Near and Far. He improved on his narrative then. Sleeping Gods is like his swan song of narrative games. Um, the, the narrative in this was so engaging, and what is incredible about it is that it's this massive open world game um, you can see here that there is this map book which has 
if you were to take out every piece and they're double-sided so you couldn't really do it but if you were to be able to take it all out he, he gives you a little mini map that you can look at where everything is spaced out but then there's even the expansion content at the bottom it would be this huge map that would take up your entire table um, and really you can go any direction you want and it was so amazing to me how the story still felt connected I still felt incredibly engaged in the story. I just wanted to keep going and going and going. And, Ooh, what's there? Ooh, what's there? Ooh, I definitely want to go here. And oh, God, should I go north or south? I want to go both places. Um, to the point where, uh, yes, it's a hugely narrative-driven story game, but I think there's like 13-some-odd endings, different endings that you could get. And uh, I, I feel like there's tons of replay value because there's so little. I have explored so little of this map. There are far corners of it that I haven't even ventured to yet. So I'm like, all right, next time I play, I'm just going to head that direction. Um, and it took me about seven play sessions to get through, which really isn't that bad compared to like a Gloomhaven or a Madara. A Gloomhaven took me three and a half years to complete that game. Madara may take me that long by the time it's all said and done. This one I was able to sit down, and if you commit to playing it every night for a week, uh, playing solo or with you know your partner at home, you'll have gotten through one of the storylines. So uh, really not as like massive of a commitment as some of these other narrative games which usually tends to happen when they people make a narrative game they want to create this really long adventure that you go on and, and will remember forever i remember tons of the details about this game but feel like there's so much out there to explore i just can't speak highly enough about how well this game was done and the narrative is a huge part of that um and uh, you know one of the things that uh, you know ether fields made my list but was called i think it was yeah it's my number 11. one of the things that i didn't like about ether fields was having to flip through that book so much and flip from one little snippet of narrative to the next and back and forth and back and forth and was just so tired of flipping through that book whereas this one has a little bit of the same thing but i didn't feel nearly as bogged down by finding you know the the entry that i was supposed to read uh, again, I was just so taken by this game. Um, you will see this game again in my top games of 2021 list. I guarantee it. Um, because it, it, w it was just fantastic. And it is an excellent narrative experience. So if you're going to pick one game off this list, uh, the artwork's amazing. The story is there. Uh, this, this honestly, the, the closest thing I could compare this game to as far as video games is concerned, was Le uh, Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, the one that uh, came out for the Switch, which again was an amazing open world Zelda game. And the story was there, the story was great. Um, this one is like that video game in a, a board game fashion um, with a slightly different theme. But anyways, uh, I'm gonna stop gushing about Sleeping Gods now, and that's going to conclude my top nine narrative uh, story games. Uh, overall, these are not just necessarily 20, 21 games. Um, so if you enjoyed this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to be part of the remainder of my 12 days of Christmas challenge, please consider subscribing to the channel. Once again, thanks for watching. Have a great day.